debt collectors don't have the same powers as bailiffs. I want you to know your rights so that if you get letters, phone calls or emails, you know exactly what they can and can't do. First, debt collectors need to prove that you owe the debt. For example, they might say that you owe 100 quid for a parking ticket, catalogue debt or a bank loan, whatever it is, you need to make sure that it's definitely yours. Mistakes happen and sometimes details are mixed up. They need to provide actual evidence and the type that would stand up if they took you to court. As for the original credit agreement, I'll leave a previous letter in the description for you, but make sure that you don't sign it. I don't want to give them access to your signature. Debt collectors are persistent, that's how they make the money, but they have to abide by certain rules. Don't let them in your house. They have no right to come in, keep the door shut and talk to them through the letterbox if they show up. By law, if you tell them that you only want communication by email, they have to abide by it. They're not legally allowed to bombard you with calls. They can't ring you before 8 o'clock in the morning or after 9 o'clock at night. They're not supposed to call at weekends either. If you tell them that you only want to be contacted by email, they have to respect that. If they don't, then you can make an official complaint. All the correspondence they send has to be comprehensible. Debt collectors aren't allowed to confuse you with jargon. Letters and emails should be easy to understand. If the debt collector tries anything underhand, like entering your home uninvited, acting like a bailiff or threatening jail, make a note and complain. First, complain to the debt collection company, then to bigger bodies like the FCA, the Financial Conduct Authority, or the Financial Ombudsman Service. If they side with you, the agency might even owe you compensation. Check the date of your alleged debt. If it's over six years old, you've paid nothing towards it and had no correspondence, then it's statute barred. This means it isn't enforceable by law anymore and they can't take you to court. I've actually heard of some debt collectors buying in debt that's statute barred just to try the luck. If they have the proof the debt's yours and you do believe that you owe it, remember they only pay a fraction of the amount for it, sometimes as little as 10p for every pound. So here's a bit of quick maths for you. Get your debt and divide it by 10. That's probably the figure they've paid for it. I doubt they'd accept what they paid as a settlement fee, but if you show them with a budget that has your income and your expenditures, that it would take you a long time to pay that amount of debt and offer them a settlement figure between 30 and 50%, and then they might say yes. So for example, if you owe a grand, they would have paid around 100 quid for that debt. They might accept between 300 pounds and 500 pounds to settle, if they know that you can't afford that much. But if you do get a settlement deal, make sure that you get proof of payment. Make sure it's all in writing. Sometimes these companies add a little extra something, fees or charges that you shouldn't be paying. So always request a detailed breakdown of what you owe. If you genuinely owe money and you can afford it, it's best to clear the debt so you can just forget about it. Before cementing any agreement, get some advice. Organisations like Step Change and Pay Plan are fantastic debt charities that can guide you. Their advice is confidential and it's free. After reaching out, you'll typically get a 30-day grace period to set up a repayment plan. But I'm aware that you may not have access to cash to pay off your debts. If you do feel like you're financially struggling and you don't really know where to start, it might be worth looking into some debt solutions. Now, all of them come with their own set of pros and cons, so it's really important to research thoroughly so that you can find the right solution for you. Some can lower monthly payments and others can even write off some of the debt. If this is something that you want to explore, I'll leave a form below this video and it'll ask you a few questions like, how much debt you owe and how many people do you owe. And then at the end, it'll connect you to a company that I've partnered with. You can ask loads of questions and see if any of them are a right fit for you. If you use that link, you'll also be supporting Money Nerd. So thank you.